Hi everyone, welcome to the KyoOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to implement the first scenarios that we created. So last video we created a few scenarios and we're going to start implementing those scenarios. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I'm going to be posting the link so you can keep it up and subscribe so you can and hit the bell so you can receive the notifications of the next videos. Right? So uh, let's start. Great. So now just one explanation that we have two feature files here. One is in English and the other one is in Portuguese. They are exactly the same, but as again, one is in English and the one is in Portuguese. Uh, so this is where we stopped last video and now we're going to implement this, right? So if you remember our code, we our strategy actually we're going to be we're going to have the feature and we already have the user feature and we're going to have a step which has this step definition is going to be user step definitions and these are linked through regular expressions so what I'm going to do I can't create this manually but IntelliJ helps me so I can do out enter or return or control if you're on a, on a Windows and you're going to have the options to create uh, the the code for one step definition or all of those I'm going to create for only one and now I can have I have an options to use Java 8 or regular Java Java 8 is going to be using lambdas which is a new way of writing Java and it's a very powerful way to loop in through uh, collections and, and so on. I'll be using Java regular because uh, most of you probably are more uh, familiarized and comfortable with the old way of writing Java code. I'll be doing this series of videos with Java but at the end of the video I'm going to be creating a new branch with the new way of writing Java as well so you can uh, watch those. Uh, here is going to be user step definitions. I'm not going to uh, worry about where because I'm going to be refactoring. So we are going to be writing, creating inside the steps. So I'm just going to refactor here and now I'm inside steps. See that it already created a, a class for me. He already created a method uh, with the same name and here's the regular expression and this is how it, it, it glues the feature file with the Java code right note that it still haven't recognized yet right so there is no declaration and this is because uh, it did not do a very good job on uh, on doing the regular expression so the regular we need to map this right this is a variable that's going to be sent to the code right and this is also something that's going to be sent to the code and we need to tell this right the first thing we need to make sure it maps this here right and there are a few ways we can map something in using cucumber right so if you go to the cucumber documentation you're going to find cucumber expressions and there are a couple ways you can do this right you can use int and it's going to find an int there for you, any int. A float is going to be a float. Uh, a word is going to match a word, not multiple words. So it would match banana, but it would not match banana split. It could match a string, either using single quotes or double quotes. And this way you would match banana split, but it needs to be with quotes. Or it can match anything right okay so let's take a look so I'm going to use a word because this is going to be mapped as a word right so we can come here and I can change this this is not an int probably thought it was an int because of the v3 you're going to see that it's a v slash v the number int and then uh, the user, and this is wrong, we want this to be a word. 
you can see it matched here, right? It found that thing. So I'm going to put word. And if I put something extra here, like for some reason my the scenario here with doc string is breaking IntelliJ, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I'm going to be posting that later on, but uh, so I, I want to show you the word, right? So you're going to see that it matched. So this is the whole word. Uh, if I put anything extra, it does not understand. I could put nothing, which is the anything here. It's going to use as boundaries the to and the with. So I can put anything here and anything here that is also going to match and is going to send this as a verb, all right? But I do want to be a word, right? So this is a word. Awesome. Uh, therefore, since this is a word, I need to be sending as a string. It thought it, thought it was an int, but this is a string. And I'm going to give a meaningful name called endpoint because I'm sending the endpoint. And also I need to tell it that I want to send this as a map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is a map of a string as a key and a string as a value. And I'm going to say this as user. All right? So this is going to be sent as a map of string as a key and a string as a value and I'm going to call it a user, right? Great. Now I'm going to send I'm going to start dealing with this code, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing a uh, rest assured code here. And uh, I'm not going to go into a very basic details of what, what it does and what it is. I'm going to be posting a video of how I, I, that I explain this basic process of rest assured, right? But then it's given, I'm going to be using a given. I'm going to import the rest assured given. And I'm going to say, okay, the content that I'll be using is content type. And I'm going to say content type JSON. So this way it knows that it needs to transform the map in, in a JSON. And the body of that content is going to be the user, which is our user here, right? So our code here user, the data table, right? So we are also going to be then my action when given that I have a body JSON, a body user, when I do something, right? And remember that our contract talks about a post. This is a post to slash slash user. Uh, not here. This one. This is a post to slash user, right? So I'm going to do a post, right? And I'm going to say HTTP localhost one two three four slash API, right, plus endpoint, which is our endpoint here, right? So it's going to be slash API, slash API, slash v3, slash uh, the endpoint, uh, slash user. Great. Now I'm going to say, then I expect something. And what I'm going to expect I'm expecting a content type, content type JSON. And also, I already expect the status code of being HTTP status as, okay, CS, okay, 200, which is 200, right? Okay? Right. Why I'm using the status code here? Because I want to make sure this step was successfully. I don't want to execute a step that failed, right? Uh, I want to make sure that when it left this step, I already reached what I wanted. 
Great, so this is basically the first thing we're going to do, right? If I put a breakpoint here, so let's put a breakpoint here. And if I execute this as a debug mode, you're going to see that I already have the endpoint as v3 here. I already have the user also, right? Everything here is already was sent to me. I have the user with all the data that I want, right? So everything's already here. And because of the JSON content type here, I it already knows that it needs to uh, transform this table into a JSON. Very magic, right? And then everything else is going to be a post and then a check, right? Now we need to do this part. So I'm going to do alt return or control return. I'm going to create a new step, but this time I'm going to choose the user step definition file and it's already going to do that for me. I'm going to need to change this again because this is a word, not an int. Right, so it matched the whole thing here, right? Um, and now what I can this is also string endpoint. Right? And now what I want to do is I want to check something, right? I need to say when I go to this endpoint here, yeah, when I go to this endpoint v3 user slash Rafael, I'm going to find something, right? And I can play with this a little, right? I can come here to Postman. And I already have here the user, right? And the body. So see the user when I do send to be swag, swag a pet store. Great, yeah. So see it found and it was 200 and it, it found based on the user. If I put another user here, user not found. Right, great. So when I come here, I need to say when I don't have a given, I don't have a specific given because I'm going to do a get, there is nobody. When, right, and I'm going to import, I do a get for the same thing here. So let me put it just here and remove the post. Then I expect something. This is going to be a catch because I expect these two same thing. I expect the content type to be JSON, JSON, and I expect the status code to be 200. But I need to expect something extra. I need to say, okay, the user needs to match, right? Those user needs to match. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that the body user the body and the body username, right? So I'm going to say body username needs to be is, which is a, uh, a testing uh, feature that I can say this is extra right this is uh, not extra this is something this is that i'm going to be using call matcher is this is something and this something needs to be Raphael. right so if i run this test i click here and i run it should pass see great uh, even tells me that I can re uh, upload this report to the cloud. I can test my test and I remove and I rerun my test and now it should fail. You should say, nah, right? You were expecting Raphael and it was Raphael. So the bad part here is that I hard coded my, my, my user, right? So if there's any change here, it's going to be 
is going to be a problem. I need to make sure that those match. The same here is the one that I'm looking for, right? And the way that I can do this, I can create a variable for my map. So this is the map that I want to check against, right? So what I need to say is, okay, when I have this map here, I'm going to store this map in my class. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is a private map string string and I'm going to call it expected user and I'm going to say that this is a new hash map so this is a blank hash map when I receive this user here I can tell it now store the expected user the expected user is going to be the same as the user and since this is a variable in my class I have access in every method so this method I'm going to have access to so instead of putting my name hard-coded here I can just say okay I want this to be the expected user dot since this is a map get and the key which is username this is this is not the same keys as this one right so this is the key for the table and this is the key for the body of the return they are just the same name if I rerun this I have I have it there right so this is our first test that we have writing cucumber Right, I'm going to stop right now because the video is already too long. I don't want this to be a over 20 minute video. Uh, we're going to be implementing the doc string the next time. And uh, as, we, as we go further and further, this is going to be uh, more smooth, the creation. But there are a lot of cleaning up that we need to do, especially see, you're going to see duplication here, duplication here. This is not good and i want to work on those as soon as possible right so we can start uh a little bit better from scratch all right thank you for watching this far if you like it give the thumbs up subscribe hit the bell to make sure you receive the notification and i'm going to see you on next video thank you